I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. And that's our job. The working environment needs to be fun. Everything you're doing in life needs to be fun. How do we support our own institutions? How do we support our own businesses? We feel that with the black man spending $20 billion a year, not setting up any business. themselves go what are they doing right what's good welcome to another special quarantine edition of his blackest lit i'm your host town here in the visionary lab and today i'm joined by the brilliantly black and talented dj nick hudson what's happening bro man what it do bro good to see you man good to see you my guy man all love always always bro uh, well, we definitely appreciate you stopping by the show with us today, man. We're excited to talk about your outstanding DJ and career and everything you got going on. But for starters, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Tell us where you're from originally. So let's go back in time. It's 1988, the year of the greats. You already know what it is. <laughs> and it's March, the year of the month of the greats. So uh, now I was born in the U.S., but we moved immediately out. My mom was British, dad Jamaican, or is British and Jamaican, and we were just, nobody's in the military or nothing, they just nomadic, vibrational people, I guess you could say. And so my dad ended up meeting my mom in England well before I was born in the United States. But I ended up going to live in Jamaica for a little bit, lived in England, and came back to the U.S. around five. The only reason that they were even moving like that is because they both did music, so it was pretty cool. So music was always a part of your life, even as a as a young child then. Thanks, yeah. Like, my love came from like, so my dad was a, was a DJ, but he didn't tell me that. He didn't say nothing about it. He just used to have records and no vinyl, like nothing like what I got, not like this. It was like old school with the white gloves, they would clean your stuff off and sit it on there. And so we would bump music like every Sunday, it'd be reggae Sunday at the house, and be heavy music, the subs hitting hard. And they used to build their own speakers. So my love came from like the technical side of it first. Like it really just kind of evolved from the technology side into the vibe. And the sound system culture, like in cars, like putting subs in cars, but I was the neighborhood hookup dude. Like, and I had the Fires mixtape CDs to play in your car. That, boy, I was a hustler, I ain't gonna lie. The hustle drove me into, like everybody like, man, I'm gonna go to Nick, cause this mixes be fire. Like, oh snap, I'm getting a little I'm getting more money from doing this. I, I need to take the DJ inside serious. And then boom, started DJing. And that was like eighth grade. <laughs> so I'm talking, we're talking young. <laughs> Already. So is that when your interest kind of turned into more of a passion? Is during that time? Yeah. Well, you see them faces light up, or you play the song in the car, and then everything hitting good in the car, and then somebody look at you like, bro, what song is this? So if it wasn't for my little technical side, I wouldn't even get them fire songs early. And so I made relationships with people got the fire songs early from them uh, file share sites, younger, and made these bomb CDs, and then people get hyped. And then I'm like, all right, if I can make a bomb 20 song CD, imagine if I mix like the, the dance hall reggae DJs, where they put like 50 songs in one CD. So I'm like, what if I mix 50 songs in one CD? I wonder what that would be like. That turned into doing a party. Like literally, I, I made a mixtape at school, sold it to everybody in eighth grade. And then I said, I'm throw a house party. And bro, only like eight people came, but we kicked it. And then by the time I did my senior year party, uh, that's when the whole Little High School District thing that showed up at my house. So it was like, I just kept doing it. I couldn't stop. I was obsessed. I'm still obsessed. <laughs> already, already. So uh, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about your journey in building uh, your DJing career. Um, what were some of the steps that you took uh, as an early DJ to try to bring your vision to reality? It was, to be honest, it was just talking about my dream. Like I wasn't even, I remember we were in governor's school. And we were just in, a, I just had some good computer speakers, bro. And I didn't have nothing outrageous at that time, but I had that that booty shaking mix. And we, I made that mix before we went there of 69 boys, two line of crew. I said, I'm gonna take it back to the 90s. And we had the most amazing time off a little burn CD with 16 songs on it and a little 
Waltman player type vibe, plugged up to some computer speakers at a fountain at Hendrix. Like, that's random as heck. It's a heck to do, but the vibe was still contagious as heck. Everybody was dancing, everybody having a good time. So I was like, man, how can I make this into something? But it took going to college, doing, going like, doing what I thought was pleasing everybody else, dropping out, and then taking the risk. Like, bro, just go do it and see what happens because you already don't feel what they want. Go try do what you want to do and see, see if you really want to do it. And like, lo and behold, that thing just took off. It didn't matter what it was. I was going to tear it up. White people, show, black people, show. I didn't care what it was. It could be a country western show. I'm going to be on the forefront of that stage. So basically, I just believed in the inner me saying, like, I don't care what you give me. I'm not even from Arkansas, technically. So I can do anything I want to. And then, and then that's when it just blew up. It went crazy. It went from doing that to DJing comedy shows. And it was random. Nah, that is. That's a. Uh... That's a, a real, like, positive spin on how to take, you know, a situation where you're just going to take the risk and then see some of the rewards of it and then just kind of, like, full-fledged jump in it. You know, that's uh, that's that's the beauty of the journey. You know, that that is the journey right there. Um, so talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced in building uh, DJ Nick Hood. Man, the biggest challenge... Was, well, actually, it's really easy. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's not even that hard. The hardest thing is no, it's discipline. If you ain't got discipline, you ain't gonna do anything. So, like, I was just very good at pushing myself very hard. You know what I mean? So I was able to lock in and be just obsessed with being as good as I could possibly be for whatever party it was. It wasn't like a perfectionist type of standpoint. More like... If I keep practicing, my execution level got to be in the 90th percentile. So you ain't going to be able to F with me, no way. I didn't look at the little troubles that came my way too often. I was just like, oh, you in the way? Uh, 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 and just keep going. That's like a next level challenge, I think. I think the first level is like dealing with other people trying to doubt you. But that second challenge is your own mind, bro. It's I mean, crazy. success has a funny way of doing that, man. It'll make you, uh, it'll make you look at yourself and question things that you didn't already work through you know what I mean things that you didn't already built yourself beyond you know but the beauty of it is you can look back on what you already the work that you have done and you know that you are built for whatever it is that's coming you know what I mean you, you like you have great expectations you know um, so that's super dope bro uh, what what advice would you give to a young person who's aspiring to become a DJ good advice for them i think i had to find a niche and that's what a lot of people don't do they just come out here and start playing their favorite songs and not realizing like you gotta find people who like that and like i like this whole covid time because your instagram your facebook your twitch shoot snapchat whatever like the djs that are coming up off of that they got people that like them in a whole new country, you know? So that, that, they finding a niche where they ain't even got to go do a gig in front of millions. So the moment I switched what I was trying to do, I started failing. And that moment is when I realized I got to trust me and not try to do what I see other people are succeeding at because it doesn't mean my grass don't grow from it. And that's the big advice for everybody. Like, trust yourself, 100%. Well, uh, what's coming up next for, for Nick Hood after, you know, I know we're in this crazy time right now, but... Uh, what are some of the things that you have uh, coming down the pipeline? So I just, I got a lot of like the big things. Like I don't want to drop all the gems of ideas I got on how to make this more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A smoother transition. Cause I got, I, you know, I got to give a foresight. So I can kind of tell what could go this way or that way. Like, so it's like I can find the loophole and know how to mm. maneuver through that. but. Hey, it's always about being a shark and you don't see sharks out here worried about if they swimming through the water and don't see no food they know the food gonna come and they got to murder it and so that's how i treat dj that gig gonna come i gotta murder it and right now i ain't even thinking like bigger picture this still like i haven't even started working yet you know what i mean like i still got five or six other avenues of making money i ain't touched yet this is just me making sweat work Heart work. We should say that. It's just heart work. It ain't even hard work. It's heart. I put my heart into it. It pays off. You know, those are definitely some uh, some some big next steps, man. And we're looking forward to seeing everything that you're gonna do. 
Um, but basically, man, we, we, we just wanted to give you an opportunity to to showcase uh, your DJ and career, especially in how you're transitioning in this COVID, in this new COVID world. You know, it's crazy, but uh, I appreciate the time to speak with people like you who uh, can see opportunity in all of these challenges, you know, because it's out there for all of us. It's just about us changing our mentalities and getting that perspective like you were talking about, about being sharks and going and seizing every opportunity that comes, man. Well, from day one, we've been resonating the same way. Never had an ill day, never had nothing man, no crazy. We've always been vibing and we've always been reaching for the highest of the high. That's stuff that you can't find in every friend, every homeboy, every family member. Hmm. So like, for real, big up to you, bro. No, for real, no for doubt, bro. bro. I appreciate that, man. Same to you, bro. I just call it destiny. You know what I'm saying? I just call it destiny, you know? Mach 2, bro. Mach 2. It is written. For sure. But um, nah, we, we definitely appreciate you stopping by the show with us again, man. Uh, we're excited about everything that you have going on. But most importantly, we're excited to see you be a visionary that's creating change for people like you and me. So big ups and keep doing what you're doing. Um, and up next on this Black is Lit, we're going to have our word of the day. So y'all stay safe out there. Vibe. Now, a person's emotional state or the atmosphere of a place as communicated to and felt by others. Vibes are the language of your subconscious.